go. All right. Okay. So again, this is the October 25th share call, have call, and we've got a few folks on already. And here's the notes from last time recording on YouTube as well. Uh, pretty tight agenda or slim agenda here today, but I don't think we have any newcomers. Probably don't need to do roll call since we know everyone. Um, in terms of looking at the action items from last time, so we did have a call um, with a few folks kind of looking through getting the share red environment set up uh, and then going over how the harvesting framework works, et cetera. Talked a little bit about how to start getting folks ramped up. Um, I think everyone is pretty much set, at least at Virginia Tech that was on the call and getting their node, their node red, share red environment set up, right? It silences acceptance. Sounds is a yes, I assume. Um, I think I had something, an update to show today. Um, I think Ryan, Cam, you, you said that you had something to share as well, right? Yeah, Cam has the demo and he should be joining us shortly. I'm, I'm in here. Oh, you are? Yep. Okay. Oh, and um, did anyone else have anything else to mention before we go? Did you want to assign a note taker first? Oh, yes. Thank you. Willing to take notes here. Ideally, not me, since I'm facilitating. I can take notes. Thank you, Harsh. All right. So, one thing that I made progress on, even since the call earlier last week, was looking a little bit more at the harvesting framework. So, some of this is repeat, some of it is new. Essentially, what is set up now is looking with Crossref as a example of this. Essentially, it takes a configuration, let me pull that up, from this YAML file here, and it feeds it the URL that it should use, and then uh, names of the various properties to pull a few different things from. And so far, I am pulling uh, creators and titles. Um, so kind of looking at how that works, it's taking in the YAML file here, uh, pushing that into the environment configuration. Then it's making a call on, the, on Crossref, splitting up the items here, and then actually pulling the creators and titles. So I'll so let me just try running this really quick so you can see how it looks at the moment. Make sure everything's there. Looks like it is. I can clear out the debug windows here. Let's close this. So, okay. So just kicking that off, it then generates all these messages. And the very first one shows the actual configuration being loaded uh, into an object. So you've got you know, all these things, creator is author. So doing this mapping, given name is to author.given, family name is author.family, et cetera, URL there. And then on down, so all these is actually just pulling out a debug message at various points in the process. So this is the next one here, actually, Actually, for some reason, it's like splitting the order of these, but this one is actually this one here. <laughs> so this is what the work looks like coming out of Crossref. So it's got uh, things like a created object, a title array, an author array. So like this one, Samuel Sharp, as well as Joseph Bonamy. So then looking at how it's actually parsing that, it is getting the creators then into an array and getting given name, Samuel Sharp, et cetera, and also getting the, the titles as well. And just to prove to you that it is actually using the configuration, I'm gonna swap 
these really fast. Save this. So we've got Samuel Sharp there. So this works, though it should be swapped. And I didn't have to redeploy the code or anything. It's because it's just looking at that that one YAML file as the configuration again. We'll see that in here, they are indeed swapped by accident. And then looking at the creators, it does then have Samuel's family name, Sharp as given name. So, so the idea here is that uh, for any kind of mappings that we do for pulling things out of cross reference, et cetera, um, would then define those mapping files. It would then be fed into uh, the workflow. The workflow would key in on whatever appropriate property was and then split that out and to pull out the code the way it looks at the moment. It still needs improvement, but it's at least functional. It doesn't handle every case necessarily, but essentially it's grabbing the, the configuration uh, for given in family name, it's interesting where it's actually pulling from a few different arrays. So I'm doing a little bit of messy code here that needs to be cleaned up still. But essentially, uh, it's doing a, it has to do a, a, a parsing this author.family, just so it's doing a split on that. But then it's saying, okay, I want to get the author. It's assuming that's an array at the moment. And then it's actually saying, get me family here, or get me, actually get me given, get me family there. The, the titles looks much simpler at the moment since it's just one thing, uh, but it is also something similar where it has to grab an array of various titles. So there are, I think there's at least some titles that have more than one object in them, I'm trying to remember but it is being returned as an array anyhow. So like, here's another example of a title that's being returned. And Quick question, it, Rick. Sure, sure. So, so the, uh, the, the file that you added, the workflow file you added to GitHub the last time, the last week, does that yeah. contain this code too? It does not because this code is actually new as of 10 minutes ago. Okay, so then all you could have to do is like just update that workflow to, for someone yes. to be able to replicate yeah, so all of this? Yep, so I will push that up uh, okay. to get up after this. Perfect. Yeah, but but again, like I've, I've been working, working, working to get time to work on this and I actually just added these improvements in the last hour or so. So also just another testament to how, how easy this is, how this is, this is going to be is what we're, what we're looking at. The other thing that you'll notice here is that at the moment these are being split up in separate results. And the next thing that I was going to be looking at was merging those into uh, one object. So then the same object would have like the creators and titles. And then the idea there is that we would feed that into whichever persistence layer um, is, is at the other end for sure. So any questions on this? Hi, Rick. Uh, I have one question. Sure. Well, uh, while I was uh, uh, writing one harvest, so uh, I started with unpayable API. And uh, unpayable API requires, so you can only fetch uh, using a DOI. So mm. it could be one DOI at a time. So one problem I faced was like, if I have say a list of say thousand DOIs, how can I make my harvester like uh, run one at a time? Like, uh, it can, like I have a list of hundred URLs or DOIs. Mm -hmm. I want the entire flow to run one by one for each. Uh, like this, this uh, list could be a external input also to the system, but I sure, don't want to sure. all thousand in one node. Yeah, I think this splitter node is 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 the is something that would do it. Uh, and I think you know, kind of what this. So so this. So looking at this. So I'm just thinking out loud right now. Um, so like the right here, I'm I'm saying split on message.payload and it assumes that it's an array. Okay. Uh, so then it actually does each of these following things in the workflow one time for each. So like if you put the splitter uh, earlier in the process, 
and said, okay, I'm going to say the DOI is this and then run through all of the whatever workflow you have. I think it would work to do that. You would just need to have it being flowed in as, as some kind of uh, object. And, and like this, but probably I was also using like a property thing like this where it's uh, right, right here, I'm setting the URL that is coming from that YAML file to the URL that uh, it's expecting. Okay. So like in this one, it's then using, like it's, it's just keying off of that particular property. It, it's the one that it happens to be looking for. So because I know that I'm setting it beforehand. But like to, depending on whichever property you're doing, that would, I think that would be the thing. So you'd have like the splitter plus like then the, the setting the property. Okay, got it. I'll, I'll test it. Yeah. Uh, so is the question that you're trying to find a way to sort of like uh, sleep in between iterations? Hmm. Uh, so, so I, I found that this inject API does do the periodic thing, but it uh, calls the same thing every time at every time period. I wanted to call say different URL at uh, equal interval of time. Like every minute I want to fetch one URL, but that URL would be different. Right. So my suggestion would be to uh, write the function yourself. I think I, there might be some sort of like queue that you could use that would help. Uh, but I'm not sure if that's readily available in Node Red. Uh, but somebody may have certainly written it. Okay. Uh, I, I looked through the sort of like the uh, the library or the Node modules, or sorry, the Node Red modules available on the uh, NPM, you know, uh, library, mm -hmm. and see if there's anything that works for the use okay. case you're looking for. That's pretty much what I had for that one. Um, back to the agenda here. Go. Um, hey, Abhinav, uh, I am trying to capture as much detail as I can on the meeting minutes, but some of them uh, are very new to me. So please add mm -hmm. relevant details as necessary. Yeah. Okay. okay. So is it a good time to hand it off to Brian or Cam then? We'll stop sharing. Yeah, definitely. I can take over in a second. Let me. Uh, okay. It was on paywall. It was mentioned. Uh, I can write this part. Uh, okay, go for it. Yeah. Um, okay, so let me share my screen. Okay, so everyone can see my screen? Yes. And can you see the terminal that just appeared above it? Uh, no. Okay, uh, it's not super important. I can just describe what's happening. So basically I'm just running a, uh, so the, the way that decentralized networks usually work is that it's a common, it's like a whole bunch of nodes that are talking to each other, right? But when you join that network, you need a way to learn about a lot of nodes really fast. So what's usually used for that is a bootstrap node, which is basically just a very highly connected node that almost every other node is connected to. Um, and that facilitates a very easy process of discovering a lot of other nodes really quickly. Uh, it's kind of like, like getting directions or uh, you know, looking through the index of a book or something. <clears throat> and the idea though is that if that bootstrap node goes down, then everything keeps running. Everything's still connected to each other and you can still retrieve information from the network because it's not stored on that node, the node is just the, the glossary, the directory for where all the other nodes are. Um, so with that in mind, uh, this is a node that's spun up in the browser. And so what we can do is actually open up a whole bunch of these. And you'll see Hold on one second. <laughs> Oh, hmm. maybe come back to me in a few minutes. <laughs> this isn't 
something's not quite working right here. That's how it always happens when you demo, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. I'll stop sharing for a second. And figure out what's going on. Randy, you want to go ahead? The demo was the same for both of us. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Well, we could always you could always share all your screen. And we could see your tinkering. I got it. <laughs> I got it working. Uh, okay, so let me share my screen again. Yeah, sorry about that. Just took a second. Okay, so these are this is the list of nodes, uh, which are the other browser windows that are currently open that are connected to this one. So one of these is the Bootstrap node, goes right here, and then the other one is the uh, the other browser window that's open that's connected. So if we open up another browser window with the same URL, so it's basically just pulling the same JavaScript. You know, we'll see another one pop up. So this is connected to two other browser tabs that I have open, and also the uh, the bootstrap node currently. So that's all well and good, but you also have to be able to input and uh, retrieve information. So let's say we want to put a value in. And so it stores that value as a hash. And then if we take that hash, we can retrieve it from any of these other nodes. And it'll, it'll retrieve that value. Um, this is pretty cool, but what's really cool is if I stop the bootstrap node, so the central thing that everyone's connected to, I can still input more information. And retrieve that information from other windows. So basically, the the um, I don't know the the uh, moral of the story is that we have a working demo of multiple in browser, uh, I guess like torrent nodes essentially talking to each other, and uh, they can talk across networks. And if the central node goes down, like if the central like essentially a quote unquote server goes down, they can still talk to each other. So it provides that level of persistence and of uh, decentralization that we've been looking for. That's basically it. Cool. And then, like, like to to take the step from like a browser tab versus like a server. Like, what what is the like transition for that? Oh, so a server is actually easier. Uh, it's it's very easy to run a similar sort of thing on a server. Uh, but I can make a demo of that too. The, the idea is that people would be able to do either or, I think, eventually. And they could help facilitate things just by having a browser tab open, or they could at least download mm -hmm. things by having a browser tab open, and then uh, be able to host files by keeping a server open, like a, a server node. Um, so Cam, are you volunteering for doing a server demo on the next call? Uh, I could, I would get, definitely give it a shot. Um, <laughs> I'm, I, you don't have to, I'm just making notes. Oh yeah. Um, let's say, uh, I would say possibly there's a, it, it's definitely on the table, but okay. I, I would need to push on that. And it, it has to do with how much time I have available to me. And where, um, where is this code going at the moment? Is it somewhere in GitHub yet, or? Uh, I'll throw it on share soon. Um, it's not in GitHub right now, though. OK, OK, but you'll put it in that share research yeah. org as, as a new repo, or? Uh, probably, yeah. OK. All right, so maybe you can just shoot a, something to Discord and share dev when that's, when that's up. Most definitely.
All right. So I think that was the bulk of what we had planned so far for today. Um, I think the other thing to mention, so like Harsh referenced uh, some things on GitHub. I think not something one. I'll just pull it up since I don't have it open. It's like, so all these things are on GitHub share research. Um, the stuff that I've been working on is currently in the API schemas repo. So if you go into there, uh, there's a few different things going into the mappings. There's, here's one version of that YAML file. Um, and then the others are pretty much not in play there. And the actual flows, we push those up to a different spot. So it's on this share red flows. So this is then a version of what I just demoed, but it doesn't have the latest updates. So I will push up an update to that. So uh, the demo you gave, uh, Rick. Uh, yeah. Uh, so if I want to do the same thing on my machine, I would have to get the share red flows GitHub repository and the API schema repository to work together with it. Yes, that that well. So the so really the you technically at the moment you don't need to to get stuff from the from the harvest flows. All you really need is the API schemas one uh, because uh, you can actually just copy and paste what's in the file here and then push when you're in uh, node red. Let me go there. You can just import to there. So if I say import, and if you have it in your clipboard, then you can just paste it in it and it will actually, we'll, we'll put it all in there. But the, I think we want to have a better mechanism for that as we're going to be doing some real version control around this stuff. So I think those are the things that, we're, that we need to figure out about how to actually be using that flow directly from where it's pulling from, from GitHub. So is that an action item for before that is that, that is an action item. Yeah, so that, and actually that's a pretty good action item for someone else to take if they want to try to figure that out. Could you uh, frame it for me in a sentence? Sure, sure. So, so it is taking the flow that is in GitHub and then being able to uh, have share read look at that file that flow configuration directly from the file that's coming from GitHub as opposed to having to push it to node red uh, in, its con in its internal configuration. I'll show you where it's actually getting it now. Let me just open the shell. So it, I think it's in this, this node red directory, yes. So whatever your root is, for users, so I'm on a Mac with you know Linux, Linux based, right? And if I do uh, here, it is looking at this flows lib 2218.json as the main thing feeding that. I think there is like a configuration for that. Maybe it's in settings to change that so that there is a configuration telling it where to actually grab that the whatever flows to load so that would be the other thing to to research is how how to update that configuration to point to the flows that we want to load from github i can run with that rick that sounds great Um, based on what we discussed earlier about like not having a like a place to do like Jira or project management for this, uh, is that a thing you want to think we should like discuss now or come back to it later? Or I'm trying to determine if there's an action item there. Sure, sure. There is actually we do actually have a few issues on the share red repo. 
um, where we had put some things. This is this is it. This is right place, isn't it? I'm not seeing it for some reason. Cam Ryan, is this the right place? Yeah, it is. I'm trying to. I'm trying to see it too. It's not showing up for some reason. That's weird. Let me let me see if I can find the right. Uh, repo. I'm not quite sure this is the right repo. Is it not the repo? Yeah. Let me let me go back. Let's see. I think just share. Oh, maybe. Oh, it's just the share one. That's right. Yeah, and there are some issues in here now. <clears throat> so yeah. Awesome. So if you so if you want to go ahead and create that. Um, Issue in here, harsh. Uh, I can make sure you have rights to do that if you, if it will not let you. Okay. We can take that offline. Yeah, there's definitely some some stale tickets in here now that need to be, need to be looked at. But yeah, the so at the moment we have. I think it's, we have the one project and we haven't done anything like um, with Waffle or anything like that. We certainly could. Any opinions on that? I feel like we, we could just continue using this issue space for now. And then once we get into a more collaborative set where multiple people from different institutes are working together on things and like we can formalize more like what projects and what milestones sure, we have. Sure, sure, that sounds good, yeah. yeah. Wait, wait, where is, wait, what was that? I oh, just, I agree. I think we're just on point. Okay, so let me go back to the... All right, so I'm good, so you already got some action items on there. And I have the action item to push my code up as well. Do that. Anything else for today? Doesn't have we don't have to go the whole, the whole hour. Um I can just like want to bring attention to like uh, three action items and one of them is tentative for Cam uh, based on how much time he is able to, um, you know, find in the next month or so. Um, but I would expect like uh, that we would discuss these things on the next tech call um, and just make sure we close out these tech action items on the next tech call. Sure. sure. Is there anything else I missed uh, based on what anybody sees in the meeting minutes, please feel free to add. And thank you for taking notes. Um... So our next call is set, uh, normally we've had these scheduled uh, every four weeks, but this one got pushed back a week, so the next one is actually in three weeks. And I was also just thinking about to ask the question of whether we should have another call in between the next one, or if we should have these be slightly more frequent um, than every four weeks. But since the next one is in three weeks, we can probably punt on that one. That sounds good to me. But if we, but if it does make sense to have like something similar to what we had um, the past week, where we just did a little bit of more deep dive into getting a configuration set up, et cetera, we could have something like that. Um, any call for anything like that at the moment? Okay. The one thing I want to ask is like, uh, so as we as we going to be working through before in the next couple of weeks what is a yeah. good way to just add something to the next call agenda saying hey I, I thought about this and i was doing this let me just add it to the agenda is that a place i should go and create a document or look at an existing document and just add it to the agenda i will create a skeleton of the agenda for next time so and then send it out that sounds great that can be another action item for me uh, and I'm looking at uh, the notes on this one itself, and there was uh, an action item for Leo to follow up with colleagues at JISC on open door licensing. Is that something we would uh, we need to discuss a little bit further today, Leo? Um, yeah, I can. I mean, I can briefly mention um, what I what found out. It was not a massive task, obviously. Um, so, I mean, last time we were discussing that the open door service has been more or less recently been updated to a sort of 
v2 version which is also more heavily branded as a JISC service and previously what isn't stated clearly on that service though is the of users um, however it remains that also the v2 service uses the same um, non-commercial share alike license that the original um, open door service has used and as far I know my understanding was that um, I think your uh, Rick, your and uh, Jeff's kind of concern was, I mean, you, you've, you've basically got that interest quite strongly to harvest data from open door, mm -hmm. uh, but you see the limitation that um, in the sense that you don't, you yourself don't want to limit um, your reuses mm -hmm. to non-commercial purposes. Is that, that's the core of the discussion, if I understood it correctly. Do I? Right. That, that, that's correct. So we wanted to, want to maintain that share can be used for commercial or non-commercial yeah, yeah. Regardless. Um, okay. I mean, it's again. Um, I think from. I mean, the, the indication from from our team, from the Sherpa team, who um, manage also the open door open door service, um, is that you know we can discuss and see basically what we can do, and I think that's um, it's probably valuable to to at least do this. Um, I guess it. And, and that's really sort of slightly speculative from my side. Um, it will partly, I guess, also depend on, you know, what basically is, is, are the chances of people using it, reusing the data for heavily commercial purpose. And I, I would assume they're relatively slim at this stage. Right, right. Now, no, just, just, again, just but thinking. That's, speculative. Yeah. that's just my argument. Um, sure. But I am remembering now that this is not the, the only example of data that we would have in, in share, though, as well, if we're thinking about, uh, say, loading data from Web of Science, for example, mm -hmm. uh, that fits the same pattern. And maybe it actually is not a big, not a, uh, big deal. So, so the, the way we have envisioned the usage of kind of the peer-to-peer -peer nodes, like the stuff that uh, Cam demoed earlier, mm -hmm. is that a peer would request from another peer data within a certain scope, and then they would say, yes, you can have it, or no, you cannot. <laughs> yeah. And I wonder if the open door data would just kind of fall as one example of one particular use case that would, that would happen there. You mean in, in in the sense of what would happen there? Right. Of, like like so so this like there might be a you know if this is this for commercial or non-commercial purposes. Mm -hmm. If non-commercial, you can have the data. Yeah. If it is commercial, yeah. you can you cannot. Yeah 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 yeah. 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 I mean, if you can, yeah. I guess if you can kind of embed that somehow into mm -hmm. your framework, um, I guess that's. To me, that sounds sounds like quite an interesting case because I mean, on the one hand, I certainly share the idea that you know that data should be as open as possible, um, mm -hmm. and that, in a strict sense, again, that's my personal opinion, includes right. the non-commercial license. But of course, that license is still relatively widely used in some areas, so the problem will reoccur necessarily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 So, yeah, I mean, as, I guess there's two, yeah, then probably if I understand it correctly, basically two, two ways to approach it. One is having kind of the licensing discussion with us. And the other one is basically looking at whether, or what you can do about sort of evolving your node framework um, to have the capacity to differentiate between different, um, basically access scenarios, right? Right, right, I mean, right. right. Um, yeah, so it feels like there's some kind of action item there. Um, yeah. The, I mean, what I, what I can definitely do is, um, again, follow that discussion up internally. Um, um, and see what... Um, well, I don't, for example, know really whether we've had any sort of precedence cases, precedent cases, 
um, where you know we had some initiative or project using it, uh, using the open door data, um, while leaving basically a door open for commercial reusers. You know. Right, right, right. So, so um, I will confirm that. I will explore that simply further. Maybe also get a better sense of what, I guess, to a certain degree, what our um, internal, would say, kind of new way is. This that makes any sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does this description look yeah, good? Just, let me just go to my browser because it's larger there. Yeah. So, so I'll create a, a, a ticket in the, the GitHub issues just so we have it okay. on our list. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah. we get to it when, when it makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Okay. Good. And there are some action items at the bottom of this meeting minutes document, which I don't know if they are like uh, necessary at this point or even further down. Yeah. Or have been carried over. Yeah, these. I think these are all stale now. You can just get rid of these. Yeah, they're not they're not useful at the moment anymore. Oh wait, there was the. Yep, we did that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for checking. Okay. Anything else for today? All right. Cool. Uh, I was just going to add that uh, taking uh, making these recordings is a great idea, and I find them very useful. Uh, I just was watching the the July call and was able to come back to with questions for some people. Um, so we should keep continuing doing that. Good. Good. Awesome. All right. Well, I will stop recording now and we'll get this one pushed up to YouTube as well. Thank you. And I'll send out some notes to the share dev list about the link to these notes as well as um, link to the agenda for the next call when I've got that. All right. Thank you all. Perfect.